Welcome to Gap Street. This is Corey. I'm Gage. I'm Evan. Today Hi. we have, as Evan already said, Evan as a guest. Uh, he is from our glorious city of Columbus, as we are too. Uh, he makes music. Um, I make music as well. I don't. Gage make does music. not make music. Yes. Um, so he is the I lesser make in the conversation. He makes. Gage make podcasts. Gage make podcasts. And <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about music today. And uh, we're, uh, we're going to get really deep into it. It's going to be cool. Um, first topic, I thought it might be necessary since uh, we haven't really established it before in an episode, uh, what our music tastes are. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll, you, we will butt in as well. But um, you, you start off, I know we're both fans yeah. of hip-hop to right. some degree. Well, I didn't, I didn't even get into hip-hop or, Tell like, me. rap yeah. or, like, anything like that until you and I started hanging out, which was, like, two years ago. It's all right? me. Like, sophomore. Yeah, yeah. it's ba- basically. Because <laughs> I grew up um, in a, with a very mixed bag, but primarily... I, w- I was exposed primarily, prim- ugh, primarily <laughs> to the rock scene uh, yeah. because that's what my dad grew up with. My dad listened to a little bit of old-school rap. Uh, my dad's... Uh, I remember hearing stories about him having like tapes that he recorded where one side was Metallica and the second side was NWA. So, Very nice. Yeah. Very um, nice. Same energy. Yeah. Yes. My but my mom on the other hand, growing up, she listened to a lot of like uh, like the early two thousands like pop music. So, which was rough. A lot of Britney Spears. Old Kanye, new Kanye, say whatever you want in the comments. No, we're not going to talk about that today. Um. <laughs> but yeah, it was an, I. So I listened to a lot of rock music, especially like I got into like, like the heavy metal shit in, in musical, or in middle school music. Fuck, I'm having a stroke on the <laughs> podcast. Um, Calling nine one one right now. But yeah, I uh, eventually I, uh, Corey. Well, Corey, you and I have known each other since middle school, but we didn't really start hanging out until like late sophomore year i'd say that is a true something fact. like that yes um and then you like started introducing me to like uh hip-hop and rap like i knew about it but i had like no general taste in it and but i slowly kind of got a taste for it and i really enjoy it so that's like primarily what i listen to now um i still listen to a lot of rock but it's more like indie rock which is like weird but like we'll yeah, I have, I have yeah. a generally mixed bag when it comes to my taste in music though cool but yeah um I my I grew up with my dad's music mostly so that's what you listen to my mom always listened to like 80s rock and like hair bands and I'm not a huge fan personally um all that like old 808 um isn't your stuff. dad kind of like a folk uh thing? he makes folk music gotcha. but he listens to a lot of metal um right. he listens to a lot of like uh, Seven Dust is a good example. Um, Five Finger Death Punch is a good band. Volbeat, Disturbed, you know that that scene kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> and I also grew up with Rage Against the Machine. That was one of my favorite artists growing up. Yes. Um, and now I I discovered hip hop basically through the Spotify radio. Like that's why I ever heard it because I it was never around me before. Mm-hmm. that um and i had a few years where it was just my laptop and myself and i just i was able to discover so much music and build my library and uh hip-hop entered and i got interested in hip-hop and i started talking to people in the local scene and now i'm pretty engulfed in it um hip-hop's what i do and it's what i listen to so uh it's been that way for about five years so i like that so on to you now and uh we will be talking, I know we've been talking about ourselves, we will be talking about your music tapes for the rest of the episode. So, oh boy. please. Well, I grew up on classic rock and gospel. Okay. And I didn't I didn't hear any hip-hop whatsoever. I sense a lot of skillet. Listen to a lot um, of skillet? No, I no. listened to a lot of Jim Croce. Alright. And Tears for Fears. Okay. And yeah. Frank Zappa. Yeah. And when I hit my freshman year of high school, a buddy had showed me whatever hip hop was out at the time. That would have been 2012, 2013. Who was popular in 2012, 2013? 
Yeah. Who, who was like who was big in the hip hop scene around that time? Who was? Uh, am I am I the encyclopedia? I don't know. All of a sudden, I um, I don't know. I think. Uh, let's go with the. Never mind. Kanye. Kanye's me, always Kanye. Kanye right? Old Kanye, new Kanye. Um, say okay. Uh, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> well. I, I listened to whatever hip hop was popular at the time. I really don't remember. I didn't want to remember because I didn't like it that much. Mm. Uh, I I did, however. Usher, Usher would have been. <laughs> <laughs> That's what came to mind. That continue, but I understand that. You know, <laughs> that reminds me, Chris Brown. That was the first hip hop ish that I ever listened to. I'm not sure if that quite qualifies as hip hop. Anyway, Barely. I found myself listening to a lot of '90s hip hop, namely. Uh, Nas, just yes. just Nas. Yes, high five. Over Namely, that. Illmatic. Yes. Illmat, just Illmatic. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I don't really listen to his other stuff. Too. I totally didn't hear about Nas through Tony Hawk Underground either. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, that now I remember. Project Eight, Tony Hawk Project Eight is how I discovered hip hop. Very no, first. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. That is how. Dude, skating games have done so much for hip hop. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I just remembered that that's how. It's like, okay, that that excited my memory. That's how I got into Rage Against the Machine was uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two. I would because right. I would just loop Gorilla Radio. Good. It's a great song. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, after I uh, listened to a lot of Nods, I wanted to understand how these songs are made. So I looked into it. Turns out, out of sampling. Turns out, sampling isn't always easy. It's not. So, I agree. I started to get into sampling, found it very fun, and then uh, I guess that's where I'm at today. Sampling. Sick. Um, well as a better segue than the next topic I have written. Uh, let's talk about your first tracks then. Um, Cause I have been listening to your library uh, pretty much nonstop over and over again uh, for the last week or so, uh, just to get in mind some questions about it. Um, and three iterations of the same track uh, called Lucent, right? Is that how it's pronounced? Yes. Uh, those particularly caught my ear, my eye, yeah. uh, whatever you, whatever works there. Um, and they were, they seemed, like, was that 2016, 2015? When was that? I believe that was 2015. Okay. Because it was, and now, now you've met, you mentioned me in the car that you have, you had an older page before as well, but yeah. at that point, um, that early in your production, it already seemed to me so sophisticated and intelligent the way you put together your samples, the way you put together your your percussion. Um, and I just wanna I just wanna know the process uh, that went into creating Lucent V one through three. I'm interested. Well, when I first started producing tracks, I would take the samples, and I would come up with at least three uh, different speeds or pitches or arrangements for the same sample. So I'd get a few different loops, and I would just listen to them repeatedly for, as I told you, a long time. And I would eventually hear what the percussion ought to sound like, and then I would go and do it. At this time, I didn't... All of the drums were placed individually, and you know, I would take that's what I did. Yeah, three hi hats, um, a snare, and a kick, and just use them that way. So nowadays, I don't do that so much. I do a lot of sampling, everything, and a lot of chopping. Dope. Yeah. Um. My my favorite thing, percussion, is the most important th- thing to me in uh, in a track, um, both listening to it and creating it. Yeah. Um, I probably should focus on the melody a little more, but uh, I tend to make, take the most pride in uh, you know creating my, my, my percussive uh, patterns. And um, something about Lucent, 
my favorite part of it is that double kick, that really fast double kick that you hit. Like, like it's that that fast paced, and that's uh, something that stood out to me that kind of put you. Um, it it made you different. It made you unique from other producers that I've heard. Um, and I, I like to do that kind of thing too. But I, I don't hear a lot of people experimenting exper- experimenting with that today. I, th- I think it's important to uh, to mess around with percussion more than it is being messed around with in uh, mainstream music, for instance. So I really like that. And I, I haven't, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't like sat down and repeat and like repeatedly listened to your music. I have heard it. Uh, Corey introduced me to it and I, re- I am a fan of your work. But I thought it was interesting how a lot of your work is kind of short and how it's, uh, there's not like, you don't really have any like lyrics to it. It's just kind of, the best way I can describe it is kind of... Uh, like an idea that you'd almost get like like just an idea basically and it's just kind of like written down um so like why did you decide to go down the path of kind of just making these short tracks rather than kind of going through the process of like rapping over them or singing over anything that you make well uh what you said is really interesting because as i continued to make music i got more ideas and more ideas and more ideas, and I had no choice after a while, so I have to just throw the idea down. I started out, it would take me a long time to make something. Now, um, I want to take a long time, Mm -hmm. but when I, from, you know, the the idea, well, I'll juggle it around in my head for a few weeks, at best, but a a few of the tracks on my page, um, from the time the idea hit me to the time I posted it was about, a half hour. Gotcha. And those are the ones I don't like, but I have to get the ideas down. I use them later. Gotcha. That's cool. And yeah. I guess, yeah, really to answer your question, I, I do that because I would much rather somebody else work with the ideas than myself. Gotcha. So you're, you're it's kind of just putting the idea out there to see if there's somebody that wants to take this snippet of music that you make and see if they can expand upon it? Yes. Gotcha. And here I am. <laughs> I, uh, we were talking before we, before you got here, Gage. Um, I took some of uh, some clips that he sent me of uh, recordings of his piano playing and such that uh, I kind of spliced together a little bit and uh, threw my own style in there. Um, and uh, I'll, we'll, po- we'll probably play some of it as, uh, as uh, in between transition music for this episode. But uh, I definitely had some fun. Um, I think uh, we can continue working together on that kind of thing. That'd be cool. Another uh, early, um, very early track that you had, we, we actually discussed a little bit in the car, um, is a Hasty Boom Alert segment, which is my favorite name for... Any uh, any song ever I, for some reason that's hilarious to me. I don't know why, but I love it. Uh, it's simple, but the ambient uh, the ambient chords in the background are so complicated in their nature, and they're they're so interestingly orchestrated. Um, and uh, I like how it's there's something very subtle that happens in the sample where the the next chord hit happens before the next percussion hit so it's a little off beat and it's not it's not off beat as in it's behind one beat it's behind like not even a measure of of time it's um it's not within the meter but it works it's, yeah yeah I, I think talk about that uh well, the, you know, the chords kind of swell in, and it's hard to decide. I, I didn't really do much with that. Really, I just took um, an outro segment to a song, and looped it, and repitched it. Um, I loved it so much. It, it's interesting how the chords are swelling constantly. It's like all, there's some, some things always swelling in, so it's hard to even hear where one begins, where one ends. But the the percussions like the glue that's cool 
I like that. I, I like the way you said that. The percussion kind of... Yeah, because it's like dragging along a little bit, and then the yeah. kick is like, hey, come on, get up there, you know? <laughs> like, it works. It's cool. Last track of yours that I had a specific uh, question about is, uh, or not, not specific question, but I just want to talk about it. Is uh, it's currently titled 1204 2018, as in I'm assuming you made it on December 4th of last year. Yes. Um, and when we were texting about this track, you described it as musical quilting, and I very much enjoy that term, and uh, I would like to hear more of your thoughts about that. Well, I went on a little website called looperman.com. Sounds legit. <laughs> and I found two samples in different sections. And they might not have even been in a different section. I found a percussion sample. And I found a piano sample. And I liked them both, but they didn't really go together in my head. So I put them in different folders. And as I was going through, uh, I had them pulled up at the same time and listened to them. And I thought, well, maybe I can do something with that. So I took the drum sample... And, as you know, the intro is much different from the rest of it. It's kind of a, a stomp. Yeah. And what I did is I just used Ableton and set up, I think they're called uh, transients. Little pinpoints that you can drag around. Anything before and after it gets stretched and compressed. So I did that with the percussion and got something I really liked. And... I did the same thing with the uh, the piano sample. Got the chords, you know, in time, because it was like a free jazz sample. Yeah, and it all worked. That's my favorite feeling in the world when you can take a sample that is free form. You know, kind of like uh, one of the clips you sent me. That was you. You said you when you hit a chord, you just went on it for a second, and then you you just kind of slid to the next chord. It was all very free. It wasn't in any meter. And my, my favorite feeling is when you can take that kind of music and put it in a meter that works and it sounds dope as fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I love doing that. That's one of my favorite things to do. Like, uh, my track Revelation, which is uh, on my first album, Crisis Averted, that, yes, thank you, Gage. It's Crisis Averted. It's the first... It's my, my, uh... Buy Cordonic merch, redbubble.com slash slap slash shop slash Cordonic. You want to try that again? No, not really. <laughs> not really. Anyway. But that track was off of an album by Kenny Wheeler. That was, uh, that was what I sampled from. And that whole album is percussionless jazz. And it's just kind of like... I feel like Kenny Wheeler and whoever he was playing with sat there and they were just kind of like... We're just going to kind of, you know, wherever our fingers hit, it's fine. But, like, they were skilled enough musicians where wherever their fingers hit was natural. And it made a, a natural sound. And it, it was good enough to release, clearly. So, and I can't imagine how many countless hours they, they had wasted probably uh, setting up like th that was probably a a, a a a slim pick of tracks out of many more that would that were scrapped, but um, I like taking that kind of stuff that has these beautiful moments that come out of nothing, you know, these ideas that pop in the musicians' heads um, in an improvisational way, uh, and you can take that moment and you can distribute that moment. Uh, and and uh, get more out of it, when because I mean jazz improvisation. There's always, if you're a good improviser, yeah, you'll have some lackluster licks every once in a while. Um, everybody's got to play a whole note every you know, uh, at least once a, at least once a, an improv session. But when you hit that, you, you play that lick that just happened, and you weren't planning it, and it comes out. And it's like the dopest shit you ever heard. I like taking that and expanding it as much as I can. And that's what I try to do with my music. Is that Do you have any similar philosophy when it comes to sampling? 
or is it just kind of? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I like something that you also did, taking time signatures and like spitting on them, <laughs> changing them, yeah. beating them into submission. <laughs> something in four four must be in three four. I like that. I don't do very much of it, but I love it. And you do, you do experiment a lot with uh, with time signatures though, like uh, yeah. tracks like five v two, five v three, where um, like, explain that to me. That's like a five like a five four over a three four, like two different things going on at the same time. You're talking about five semicolon four. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yes, I I took a I think it was like psych rock or something. Yeah. And it was in four four. And I don't remember how I did it, but I got it in 5-4. That was really fun. Nice. I like that. Cool. So the next topic I'd like to bring up, uh, and this is something I think about a lot, and uh, I it, it's it's kind of self defeating in a way. It's difficult, but it's the way I think, and it's the way I live musically, and I can't really change it. So I, I wanted to know your thoughts on uh, <clears throat> on this. So when I when I define my interests and such, more often than not, they are out of uh, obscurity. They're out of uh, artists that, you know, like, you know, the hipsters say, like, oh, you wouldn't know them. Like, that kind of that kind of bullshit, you know. Um, I tend to gravitate toward that no matter what. And if there's an artist that is uber well-known, like Kanye, for instance, or uh, I'm, Kendrick is one, um, is, is an exception there, because I'm a huge fucking Kendrick fan. But... Uh, Tupac, for example, um, people like, uh, who else is uber famous? Just like list an uber famous artist, I guess. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Also. ACDC. The, when I think of that level of mainstreamdom, it's, it, all I think of is, it's cookie cutter, you know? And I can't get much out of it. And as soon as I... If I've listened to something and I don't know that it's really popular, and it is popular, but I have not been told or shown in any way that it is mainstream, I will enjoy it more. And then when I am told it is mainstream, I will enjoy it less. And I can't control that aspect of my interest. But that ends up happening. Do you have any similar attitudes, either of you, about music or uh, art or movies or anything like that if it's it's, it's more of like discovering it yourself you know mm-hmm. it feels better that way I have caught myself moving away from more mainstream stuff recently in both music and film mm-hmm. um, over the past couple months I've noticed that whenever I'm on Netflix a category that I often go to the most is indie movies because well, you're I, an indie filmmaker. Because I'm an indie filmmaker. Uh, but no, it's based, it's I like to see uh, what kind of stories that people can tell with not a lot of budget because it's it's somewhat inspiring. Because you look at these movies like all these like action superhero movies that are coming out with these giant budgets, and like you you see like DC Universe. <laughs> they don't make good movies. They don't. They make trash movies, dude. Um, Batman vs Superman, worst shit I ever watched. I walked out of that theater did you angry. Really? I walked out. Uh, I thought you were gonna say you walked out in the middle of it. I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as that dream sequence happened, I'm like, no, oh, yeah, it's, it's not good. Anyway, but like, continue. I feel like some of my favorite movies are movies that are kind of around the indie side and don't have much of a budget because it makes you. Not having a huge budget means that I feel like you have to focus more on the characters than you have to focus on, like special in the, effects in the story than you have to focus on. Are we gonna have enough budget to pay a bunch of VFX artists to sit in a room for eighteen hours a day right. to 
rotoscope out Henry Cavill's mustache. <laughs> um, because you can't computerize a character. Right. Yeah. It's like, I feel like you have to focus more on the character and like work harder to like make it look like it's higher, like make it look like it's higher budget than it actually is. Like I feel like there's, because with these Hollywood movies, they're just like, all right, here's a few million, take it and make us more money. But it's kind of like like these like. I focus. I watch a lot of uh, stuff on the Amaletto YouTube channel, which reposts a lot of uh, uh, short films that people post on sites like Vimeo and YouTube and stuff. They like they'll get the rights from the original filmmakers and yeah. repost it so that it gets more attention. And some of the stuff that people like put out is just like amazing. Like some of the best short films I've seen, Sweet. like I can see on there, and it's like Oreo. <laughs> Uh, I'm proud of those of those videos. They, they're, they're good, they're pretty, but at the same, it, like those are both just in, the inside jokes of themselves. Everybody, check out Parzavile's YouTube channel. Uh, That's not even on. That is a separate. Is it channel. not on there? No, okay. What is, what is it on? It's just is it just Gage Stifler? Okay. Yeah. Ga- check out. Uh, <laughs> no, dead ass. Seriously, check out Gage Stifler's this man right here. His his YouTube channel because. Uh, uh, we, he actually makes quality content, um, and I, I happen yeah, to be an a, actor yeah. in a few of them, I believe. Have you been so, in any? Uh, I've been in. I was in Game Makers. You were, in, yeah, you were in Game Makers. Um, but other than that, I don't think yeah. I was in anything else. Like, but I did help out with some of them film wise. Yeah. So, um, y'all should check that out. But my, my, I've noticed that like that whole thing. My idea with like movies, and uh, I've been listening to a lot of like indie rock yeah. recently. I like I have a Spotify playlist that's literally titled Indie Bullshit. Nice. And it's just like uh just like and it is it does kind of have like this obscurity like uh there's this one song She leaves me roses <laughs> by the stair. That is okay, that's not <laughs> I know that's not indie at all, but <laughs> that voice is what I think of every uh, time. <laughs> no, there's like there's this one song, it's a uh, Miss something missing something drunken loser and it's like the most obscure just kind of it's like when so you I think wouldn't of know it. indie rock uh, probably not I know our buddy Sam does <laughs> uh and uh Dan- with, I think Daniel Johnston is his name um he just like his voice is just like this sounds like a guy that shouldn't be singing but for some reason it works and it's <laughs> actually like really entertaining and like really good um his some you you if you anybody watches like Casey Nice if you guys watch Casey Neistat's videos some of his songs show up in there um i think in his in particular his like draw my life video i think some of his music shows up and like the the his voice is just so weird like you wouldn't think that like, a guy like that like with a voice like that would continue to pursue music cuz it just it sounds awful but at the same time I it stop works. pursuing music <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds like really Daniel deep. Johnston this I is a message from Gab Street end your career <laughs> No I don't want him to cuz I actually like his stuff because it's like it's shit but it works No if you're actually listening to this uh thank you first of all and uh and tweet please out, and tweet keep, out our podcast Tweet our out our podcast uh right. We don't hate you. We love you. All right, now that we've promoted, promoted you in our heart. Now that we've promoted you, please send a check to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, please send a check to uh, Outage Couch right. Media. But anyway, um, that's, that's my spiel. Uh, wh- what about you? Do you have any interests that are like... You like, you like uh, obscure shit way more? You know? Right. Yeah. Um, well, when I was a kid, you know, most kids have uh, action figures. Video nice. games. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, hmm action figure to video games. Okay, I had I had blocks, I had sharpies and paper. Never heard of that shit. I had <laughs> paper, <laughs> felt faces, you know? Yeah. And so my entire childhood was me sitting alone just trying to figure shit out. Okay. And I look for that in music where I think that artist just sat in the room and figured some shit out away from the mainstream. So, like, rather than, like, a producer in the back being like, okay, we're going to have this kind of beat, and we're going to have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like when, uh, whether it's a film, where where, where it's just hard to find any conventions Mm -hmm. in whatever it is I'm looking at, whether it's paint, or filmmaking, or music, or sculpting, yeah, or poetry. It's not someone else's work that you, like, took and adapted. 
Yeah. Right. They say that it's not possible to make anything truly original, but I, I, I disagree with that. You, you could make something truly original. I believe you have on, on your SoundCloud page. I think you have. Now, I did, when I... Say, wait, the next topic. Uh, when I was listening Cue transition to, music. Cue transition music. Um, when I was listening to uh, Safe as Milk by... Captain Beefheart. By Captain Beefheart. I've yet to and his that. magical band. Um, trying to catch up. Try, I am trying to catch up, Marin. Um, I was. Have you seen Marin by any chance? Oh, yeah. Anything? Dude, I fucking love Marin. Did you watch the show and the stand up? We're going to have Mark stand-up. Marin on Gab Street. He's going to drive up Gab Street with us. He's going to take a walk down Gab Street with us. One of these days. You know if you're say. listening, Mark Marin, you get on. I look like a young Mark. Gage looks like I you. did, especially when I grew my hair out. I looked like him. Gage wants to look like you and does look like you, and uh, don't be creeped out by that. Just take a walk down Gap Street. If you're anyway, listening, it's been years. You should be at Doc at the radar station by now. <laughs> should back. You should be back from the convenience convenience store by now. Um. So what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, uh, Captain Beefheart. Yes. So I was listening to Save His Milk. And I was on Genius because I'm brainlit and I have to read, uh, I have to read lyrics and their analyses to understand because again I'm a brainlit. Um, smooth brain. I'm smooth brain. I do not have a folded brain. Gage here has a folded brain. Um, I have a big smooth brain. Anyway, it's a sphere. Um, I. This is the most fucking ADD podcast. <laughs> um. I noticed, cause, and well, I didn't notice. I read in uh, in, in Genius uh, that he was like the beginnings of punk, kind of. Uh, and one song that particularly stood out to me was uh, "Dropout Boogie" off that album, um, and that for sure was like real, like like this super raggedy and harsh. But was were they like the be like the actual beginnings of that? Was like that was that the start of like harsh music? Or was um, that was like sixty seven, you know? Yeah. And so. he had music in I think he recorded his first stuff in sixty five. He recorded Save His Milk in sixty seven. He recorded his Magnum Opus Trout Mask Replica in sixty nine. By nineteen eighty he had a song entitled Ashtray Heart, which I do believe is sort of a hate letter to a lot of the uh, members of the punk scene for stealing his thunder, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. quite say he, he created punk or anything, but he... he Contributed uh, to it, to a certain extent. Yeah, when, when the harshest music you would hear is... You know, there just wasn't a lot of that, that gritty tone. Yeah. In the easy fifties to sixties, yeah, it was a lot of easy listening. Elvis, man, come on, Elvis, uh, you know, pisses me off. <laughs> no, um, for different reasons. <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, that album was. Uh, I, I will admit, uh, it is not music that I would personally have on my playlist to listen to to chill out. Like that's it's not my vibe, if if that makes sense. Yeah. But I hardcore respect its musicality a lot. And there's a lot of experimentation in there that I haven't heard before. So I think that's cool. And in your music I hear a lot of the influence. Definitely. Because I listened to the album and then I went back to your page and I listened to uh a few tracks. And I was like, Well shit, yeah, like this is, you know, it was an imitation by any means, but a lot, uh, some of the patterns, some of the percussion, some of the, some of the, mostly the guitar tone, really reminded me of uh, Captain Beefheart. So I can definitely hear his influence in your music, for sure. I try to let it influence me uh, just enough. That's I don't that's want a good way to do it. Imitator, yeah, cool. I, I love that. Yeah, you I, put a little I, beef I, in your heart. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fuck you, Captain. I'm sorry. 
Is there is there anybody uh, you know? I'm just talk about myself for a minute. Um, is there is there anybody that uh, you hear as an influence in my music? I hear a lot of jazz. <laughs> okay. But then again, yeah, it's because you sample a lot of jazz. That would help. But what I find interesting about your music is that you can take jazz and turn it into hip hop because I only hear that occasionally. Maybe uh, ooh, it was it was Grant Green. One of his songs was sampled in "Sing About Me." I'm dying of thirst. Oh hell yeah! And I that, love that song, dude. And who produced that? Like uh, like of Puck Div or something like that. Yeah, produce that one, and that was really the only example. I mean, we could mention Hotline Bling's uh, "Why Can't We Live Together," but I don't know if that. I uh, I shut that song out of my. I shut Drake out of my head entirely. What? I don't <laughs> double steal. I mean, he stole the, uh, the 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 percussion loop as well. Cha cha. He stole his entire personality. I don't know from who, but I feel like he did. Okay. I. I don't care. I'm judgmental. Don't don't fuck with but me. That commercial, but that sprite commercial. But that sprite commercial. That sprite commercial you would always see before. Last name Eva, first name greatest. <laughs> God, man. Okay. Have you seen the image of like that, uh, like the sculpture that they did for that commercial? <clears throat> I mean, have you seen the smart, the old sprite commercial that he was in? I where his head like detaches or whatever. I personally prefer LeBron's sprite cranberry commercial. <laughs> no, that is a great commercial. But the the Drake one that this one came out in like the early to mid two thousands I think where it's just like you see all of his like body parts and his and his face just kind of like mechanical ex- mechanically extend yeah. and sprite just starts pouring out of his orifices and Ouch. like it's so bizarre <laughs> and like they have like this image that I saw it's on Twitter I think it was just like it was like the model that they made where it's just it's Drake's face but like his ears are pulled out and like his like parts of his face are just kind of like extended and separated like it looks so weird I was waiting for him to be like ah, fuck it's carbonated <laughs> get it out of my face uh, you guys didn't find that as funny as I did um, but it's true yeah let's get some uh, Sprite Cranberry in our system I think we'll do some of that I had a choice I could laugh really loud and cause some clipping or contain I clipped stuff. it hard yeah you did clip it hard. I, oh, we gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. Let's cut it, cut it out, cut it out. You're the one cut. that edits it. I'm just the guy with the laptop that records it. So that's a you problem. That is a me problem. I get to go home after this and sleep. I'm fucking tired. I had work today. I had and I had work yesterday. Had so. work yesterday. Yeah. Do you have no. a job? I, I do have a job. You have a job? I do. Where are you at? Rallies. 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 My dad used can to you cut that out? <laughs> <laughs> we can. We can. You want us to? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my dad used to work at rallies back when it was called Snappers. Uh, back in the day. This was a long time what? ago. Yeah, it used to be called Snappers. They sold turtles. It was an awful business. <laughs> uh, but no, he used to... They would, he would call uh, um, sna- like napkins. He'd call them snapkins. He's like, you want me to put some extra snapkins in your bag? That's what he would do. He, How many they, my items dad was, can you do that my, for? My dad was telling dad jokes before he became a dad. He was destined to be a dad. He was That's why. To be a dad. Yeah. It's perfect. It was made to be. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So, uh, terrible segue, but uh, we're just going to go on to the next topic here. Do you have a PVC flute? Yes. I have a few of them. You have um, a flute of them? A flute of them. A few. A flu. You have a flu? Shit. Anyway, Um, so what is this? What is this thing? Is it like you you built it yourself? There's a name for it. You drilled holes in it yourself? There's a name for it and I forget. The one that you have heard, I didn't build. Okay. But then again, I may have shown you a few that I did build. It's very You only showed me one, I think. Okay, the one I showed you, I did not build. Oh, at the store. Yes. That one I did not build. I paid about 300 for that damn thing. Damn. Uh, Jesus. It broke. Oh. Is that the one you were talking to me about? It broke? Yeah. yeah. Sucked. But so, th- tell us about that, because um, that actually kind of connects to another thing on our list. Uh, Naughty Shauna. Yeah, and Overtone Series. Yes. So, educate us. Uh, the piano is tuned in 12-tone equal temperament. Sure. Okay. A long time ago, a man by the name of Pythagoras discovered 
that Pythagorean theorem. Not to shout out or anything, you know, Pythagoras. Yeah, sh- sh- shouts out to Pythagoras. <laughs> Good man. Um, anyway, he discovered that the natural overtone series of notes, the harmonic system, you take any frequency and the notes following it are a, an integer times that. So if you go 100, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, and so on. Yeah. And that gives you sort of a seven chord. Plus, you know, if you think like, uh, let me think. You get a full seven chord-ish, and then you get the start of a major scale, maybe five steps of a major scale. And then you just get notes that are too crammed together to hear any difference. Okay. So that's how, like, partials work on wind instruments. Yes. Yes. Or octaves on a flute. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, any wind instrument incorporates them. Now, I don't know if our listeners know, but uh, I play the trombone. So I know a little bit of music. So, uh, you know, be able to contribute. Well, the trombone is a yes. good example of why the harmonic series is super important. Because, um, you ever heard of an alf horn? No, it's a it's a fifteen foot long horn, and it that's there's, amazing. There's nothing. It's just a tube, and you you buzz your lips, and you get a harmonic series, and that's how you play the notes. Uh, um, Bach, I believe, used to write for the natural trumpet, which had no vowels. It's like a twig or something. Yeah, it's a big. Big long, looks like a French horn. Okay, cool. And I like the way that sounds, but I love the way the PVC flutes or overtone flutes or fuyaras, futuyaras, kansavkas, kaliukas sound, especially a kaliuka because it has no fipple like a recorder. It's got that little mouthpiece. Yeah. Uh, with a kaliuka, it's just a tube. You can go to Home Depot and get a PVC pipe, maybe you know uh, three quarters of an inch wide, and you take a file and you file an edge out of one side and then have the edge facing forward and blow across and you get a tone and I think from my shoulder to my fingertips if I made a flute that long it would be in the key of A okay. approximately cool and then cover up the end of the flute to lower the pitch depending on what note you're playing it'll lower a different amount so then you get a complete scale it's really crazy and the speed of the air is what dictates it as well right yeah yep. yeah cool and it's just blowing there's no buzzing or anything like that it's just yeah. just blowing that's dope kind of like a harmonica hmm? I know you play the harmonica too you yeah, play the harmonica, mad harmonica. a lot of blowing and sucking yes it is uh, our, our buddy Mike who was on the, the podcast last week has a harmonica that has badass motherfucker engraved on it uh, which I think is pretty special I mean, what else would you engrave into your harmonica? Harmonica? Honer. <laughs> it's what it is. Uh, my uh, my brother got my dad a wallet for Christmas that's engraved with badass motherfucker on it. It's good. Nice. Because my dad loves Pulp Fiction. Nice. Very good. So, I, there's actually a Pulp Fiction poster right behind yeah. me. I got it in Germany. It's three by four feet. It's badass. Anyway, just a little shout out to... Uh, Quentin Tarantino right there. And um, Germany. Shout out to Germany. And, shout Germany. Out to Germany. and Germany, yes. All of Germany shouts out. Uh, you got your poster. Trying to get that clout. They basically I got invented the flute from horn. Germany. You got the flu in Germany? I didn't go to Germany. I Wait, no. It. What did you say? I s- don't worry about it. I said they practically <laughs> invented porn. What? I didn't know that. Why did you tell me that? Why do I know that now? Berlin was crazy back in the, in the early days. Yeah, it was crazy in the 90s, too. Yeah. That's true. When it was, they had to do when something were, when there were two of them <laughs> to entertain themselves. Uh, can't just talk about the wall all day, uh, you know. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to talk about walls. We don't want to talk about walls right now. So, next topic. We're going to talk about Evan again, because he's our guest, and he's wonderful. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan. Hi, folks. Welcome to Gap Street. <laughs> We're taking a walk down that street. We're taking a walk down Gap Street. Like we already did this. 
I we, let's do it again. It's a good exercise. So yeah, it is. It is. It's only episode three. It's only episode three. It's true. So uh, one of your other, I'll use the word aliases that I've seen on social media or on SoundCloud is Dominic Ray, and you briefly explained it to me at one point a long time ago, but I don't remember. So, what's that about? I was born with that name. Okay. And then I was adopted. And I got the name that's... That's that name. Then that name... Having that name would make sense, then... Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Indeed. So, uh, oftentimes I go by Dominic. Some people call me that. Most people don't. An ex-girlfriend calls me Ray. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Do you still occasionally go by that alias, though? Or yeah, is it just kind of an, is it kind of just an old name that you used to use, or like how relevant is that name in your life right now? Uh, what do you identify with more, Evan Swiatecki or Dominic Ray? Evan Swiatecki. Okay, yeah, it makes my ears stand up. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, what do you mean by that? That's interesting. Those no, I just... I, I oh, just, you mean... Okay, yeah. yeah. As in, like, I heard my name. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah. Okay. If someone said Dominic, they'd have to say it a few times. Okay, sure. gotcha. That makes sense. Cool. So, uh, along with uh, other identities as well, um, we, we, we discussed this briefly before we started, uh, but uh, Hedge Boys is something I noticed <laughs> was a tag under one of your tracks. I forget which one. I think it was like track three or something. Yep. But, yeah. I guessed it right. Nice. But, uh, what's that all about? Hedge Boys. Uh, when I was in high school. Hedge Boys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Diamante. At the time, I just knew him as the six foot four freshman when I was a senior. Okay, this is really crazy. Good Lord. Um, I walked into a classroom. It's my first day of physics. And he jumps out of his chair to introduce himself to me. And he says, bro. I just caught an Ekans. What's your name? <laughs> I'm like, Evan. He goes, Evan. And named his snake Evan. <laughs> and then I was, we, Hedge Boys followed shortly after. I realized not only does he play Pokemon, he plays Sonic 2. And I've heard you're a purist. I'm a purist. <laughs> yes. The only thing wrong with Sonic 2 is dash panels. Okay. No, it's that water level, my guy. That's the worst part of Sonic 2. Well, if you're going to take all the dash panels, just put them in that water level and the game's fixed. Yeah, that's true. The music is what makes that even worse. <coughs> I watched a, a Nakey Jakey video. On, Shout out Nakey Jakey. On, uh, Great channel. On, what was it? I think... What video was that in particular? I think it was... I think it was just wa his video on water levels yeah. in general. And it's... It's a good topic. Because to I, I grew up uh, playing that game. And it was I, I remember specifically just... The music in that just make just fills you with anxiety, and it's because it's just like super like fast paced and intense and just loud. That it just oh God. You know, I uh, I recently I picked up um, the Spyro Reignited trilogy, and I I used to play the shit out of Spyro like all three, back in uh, you know the days when I was like I don't know five. Um, those were the times. And uh, those games also have pretty shit water levels, honestly. So you like, you'll dash underwater, but like you won't hit anything you want to hit. It's very directional yeah. and hard to control. So yeah, I could I could go on about water levels for a little bit too. So it's pretty bad. Yeah. So it was he hedge boys. That was just like what you guys called each like. That was your just guys' thing. Yeah, yeah. We did it as a defense against the people that claimed to be bloods and crips in our school. Oh, okay. <laughs> the that's not what I was. You guys are the hedge all. boys. Hedge boys. Was it just the two of you? Were there more? Were there it was just the two of us. So, does it have anything to do with small shrubberies? Or, or the movie Over the Hedge? Or the, yeah, Hammy. Well, Hammy. The that's squirrel. what people thought. They're like, "What do you mean, hedge boys? Are you talking about your mop tops for hair?" No, <laughs> we were talking about Sonic Two. All right. Not sp Sonic Spinball? No. So you're and not, not Sonic Labyrinth, and not Sonic Forces, and, and not, not Sonic Drift, and or not Drift 2. Or not Sonic 2016. Or Sonic Crackers. Or 2006. Sonic Crackers. I've yeah, never it was, heard of that it was one. The, it was the prototype of Knuckles Chaotix. 
Oh, really? And Knuckles. All huh. right. <laughs> I had to throw in an and Knuckles. Um, so it's, it wasn't about, like, Smoke and Hedge. No. Uh, well, <laughs> I, okay, well... Well... <laughs> we did tell... Um, we told the dean of students at our school that we were going to smoke a palm tree before we graduate. The whole thing. (laughs) We were going to chop up the bark and the leaves and smoke a palm tree. We never did because we couldn't find a palm tree in Columbus. It's kind of hard to find. Yeah. (laughs) But if we, if we had cars, we would have found found that palm tree. Yeah. There'd be palm tar in my lungs now. All There's of, worse things to smoke, I guess. There, there sure. are, like hedge. <laughs> I'd smoke that's a palm tree before I'd smoke a hedge. I'm, I'm just gonna call weed hedge now. I think that's gonna be pretty. Do coconuts like grow on palm trees? Do coconuts grow on weed trees? Does no, weed no grow problem. on coconut trees? Hmm. Where are we going with this? Does the chicken come from the egg, or does the chicken come on the egg? Is an egg a way of a chicken <laughs> becoming another chicken, or is a chicken an egg's way of becoming another egg? Is a chicken laying an egg meiosis or mitosis? <laughs> <laughs> That's a thinker. Uh... So, great segue on the last topic of the episode, sketches. You have a bit of art uh, that you have posted on your Instagram account and used as track art for your SoundCloud profile. And when I look at that art, um, there's something about it from, from how long, I've known you for like a few months now, that from what I know about you, screams you, and I can't pin it down. I, I just can't. I couldn't put in the words. But when I see that art, I think, yeah, that's him. Like, that's just what comes from that mind, you know? It makes sense. So, uh, what drives you to make art? What is what is the art about? What, yeah, what's, what's your, what are your motivations? Well, I am not very patient and I'm not very rational most of the time with most things. With the really important things, I'm fine. But when it comes to everyday activities, I take the, 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 the way that I like for most things. I fold my clothes the way that I want to do it. Even if it takes twice as long, it doesn't look half as good. I just don't want to do it. So when I started to draw when I was in middle school, I hated it because... I had a teacher telling me this is the way to do it. You start with an outline, then you you go over and you erase your uh, mistakes, right? What's a mistake? Right. I don't see any mistakes in art. Uh, I I work around them. So I I keep a really, really, really strict philosophy with sketches. Um, They're done in pen only. I fuck with that, yeah. I either post it or throw it away. I don't fix anything. And which means anything that's on there was a first. I mean, there was nothing erased or corrected. It was, if I don't like a dot, I I just change whatever the next thing is that I draw. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used to do because I used to just doodle a lot in my notebook on occasion, and I would always, there was always just kind of like I never went for the pencil. I always went for the pen, and if I ever messed up, it was just kind of like. I'm either going to try to make something out of this or I'm just going to scrap it and restart and do something else. Because I don't like the way... Because uh, I, I, I was never one to like uh, press lightly with the pencil or do like a lot of shading. It was more just kind of like harsh lines. Mm. And so I figured, like, well, if, I'm, if that's the way I'm going to draw, then I might as well just use a pen. Because erasing that, if I messed up with a pencil, erasing it's going to look like garbage. Yeah. That's uh, more so or less it's, yeah, so it's, how I it, felt too. Yeah. And it's kind of when you see eraser marks, it's kind of like a like a, a symbol of shame almost, because it's like you see that that former, like what it almost was, and then you look at it and you're like, well, 
now I, it's kind of like doing a live performance and saying, oops, I fucked up, like while you're like playing a solo or something. But the audience doesn't know unless they've like studied the piece of music or whatever. They don't know that you fucked up. And so, I mean, obviously you're not performing for anyone, but it's the, it's the, I think I get the same idea from it, you know? So it's good to just kind of just keep going. Yeah. So I fuck with that. It's cool. I, I don't draw ever. It's not my thing. I'm not very visual in general. I'm much more linguistic than I am visual. And so my version of that is writing things with pen. Um, and I always, when people ask me, like teachers ask me why I always use a pen, uh, I always meme. It's like, because well, I never make mistakes. But like, you know, I just like, I want to keep that, that honesty with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. It's important. Pens are nice. Pens are Pens nice. are also just like really, like pencils, like a lot of them are just kind of the same. <clears throat> but there's so many different kinds of pens. Ticonderoga, let's talk about it. Let's get the CEO it's of Ticonderoga. Soft. To, their erasers fucking suck. Ticonderoga erasers are just trash. And the CEO is no longer to come on to the podcast. So that's nice. <laughs> uh, so Evan. Fuck, you might as well quit. It's true. Uh, <laughs> so Evan, uh, before we close out, are there any topics that you would like to either rehash or create a new topic to talk about or if you have none of those do you have any shout outs you would like to make to anyone are there any projects that you would like to put out there for our listeners to check out either of your own or of people you know oh sure um voltage music on soundcloud it's my buddy he makes a few different styles of music it's like it's electronic music and i think what he's doing is really damn cool and he gets inspiration from a huge pool of music, which is also really cool. Yep. Do we, see, do we see a collaboration of you two in the future? Well, um, in the past, yes. We, oh. we, we, when we work together, it's just never serious. Yeah. I don't, I I feel don't, I don't know why that is. When we work together, uh, I, I put mittens on my hand and play the piano like with mittens on. And, you know, he's... <laughs> He plays a keyboard on the other side of the room, and it's just nonsense. <laughs> and then we go our separate ways. And I love that. Get serious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Voltage music. Voltage music. Voltage music. Cool. Anybody else? Voltage music. Voltage, Voltage music. music. And on SoundCloud, you just go by the letter M. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. M, um, and your URL, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. SoundCloud.com slash go dash home dash zero 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 and those are all the digit zero not typed out zero. Yes. So again, soundcloud.com slash go dash home dash zero zero zero. That is uh, this man right here, Evan Swiatek's music. One hundred percent worth checking out. Uh, his music has been part of my daily routine and my life for the past. I don't know, six months or so, I just kind of pop it on, and I listen to it, and that's what's up. It is windy it's as fuck outside. Damn. Holy damn. Uh, so I recommend all of our listeners to at least give a try to Evan's music. Um, it is esoteric, and it can, be, uh, it can be difficult to understand at times, but that is what is beautiful about it, I believe. And uh, once you give it time it'll communicate much more than just notes to you. So, with that message, um, we've had a great episode. Thank you for coming in, Evan. It's a great time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Gab Street. Gage, do you have anything to say? No. That's it, then. All right. See you guys next week. <laughs>